If you are told that a player has been banned or suspended, which reason do you think that might be? I'll give you a hint. If there's an enemy of sport, it's called doping. Although professional basketball players have very clear rules, they are not as strict about using substances that can improve their performance. In fact, there have been complaints from references in other sports because of the permissive drug vadimicum that a basketball player can consume, something that has allowed them to access Olympic gold medals having the advantage over other athletes. So is it possible for a player to be banned for drug abuse in basketball? Of course, but that's not the only reason. We invite you to learn the nine reasons why a basketball player was banned or suspended in this league. Nine, the better bet. One of the greatest urban legends surrounding sport is that the results between teams in a match are agreed in advance. Imagine the money at stake, and even if it involves too many people, it's not a crazy idea. Cornelius, Connie, Lance Hawkins, is a former Hall of Fame NBA and ABA player and a New York playground legend. During his first season in college, Hawkins was linked to a scandal involving the deal of scores prior to several games. As a result of his accusation, he was banned indefinitely in 1966. Sometime later, the player filed a lawsuit against the NBA of Monopoly, claiming that he was unfairly excluded when there was no real evidence linking him to the scandal. In 1969, the NBA settled the lawsuit with Hawkins, paying him financial compensation and lifting his punishment. The lack of evidence could not convict him, but neither did the embarrassing suspension and distrust of his fans could clean his reputation. 8. Go to the corner because fighting. Matches are duels in themselves. They are competitions that measure the ability and talent of the participating teams. And whoever wins the game is supposed to be the best. But for some, the best is the one who can kick his opponent's butt until they ask for the countdown. Maybe in other sports like hockey, that's part of the show. But in basketball, we don't think so. Meta World Peace was known as Ron Artest before he legally changed his name. On November 20, 2004, Artest was sanctioned indefinitely by David Stern for his involvement in the Pistons-Pacers fight. The next day, the length of his suspension was determined, which would last for the rest of the season. It was a sanction that totaled 86 games, 73 regular season, and 13 playoffs. Fortunately, Peace was able to continue his career in the sport and is now a player development coach for the South Bay Lakers G League team. Apparently, Peace has finally come into his life. 7. Under Threat Why threaten an opposing player to intimidate him when you can go directly against the big boss? Go for the head and you'll leave the harvest in the lurch. That seemed when Latrell Fontaine Sprewell, playing for the Minnesota Timberwolves, on December 1, 1997, he attacked and threatened then-Warriors coach P.J. Carlesimo during team practice. Of course, he was immediately suspended for 10 games by the Warriors. However, the Warriors ended Sprewell's $23.7 million contract two days later and was subsequently suspended for one year, 82 games, by NBA Commissioner David Stern. Sprewell couldn't stand idly by, did I? but this time he took the case to arbitration, and as a result, his contract termination was rescinded and his suspension was reduced to 68 games. 6. Friendly Fire Gilbert J. Arenas Jr. is an American basketball player who is currently without a team. Javaris Cortez Crittenton is a former U.S. basketball player who played two seasons in the NBA and a murderer who is currently serving a 23-year sentence for manslaughter committed in 2011 against a 22-year-old mother of four. On January 27, 2010, Arenas and his teammate Javaris Crittenton were suspended for the remainder of the season by NBA Commissioner David Stern for violating league rules and Washington, D.C. laws against bringing firearms into a stadium. Arenas was previously suspended indefinitely on January 6th. They reportedly stored unloaded firearms in their lockers, and they pointed guns at each other during a discussion about gambling debts in December 2009. Crittenton and teammate Gilbert Arenas were suspended for the rest of the season by NBA Commissioner David Stern for violating NBA rules and Washington D.C. laws against bringing firearms into a stadium. Any possible excuse or explanation for why Gilbert Arenas, loaded or not loaded, would have guns in a locker room in the NBA? Well, I think it's bad discretion, and it, and it shows just a, probably a lack of immaturity on uh, Gilbert's part more than anything else. I think uh, he he has a uh, an idea about how he said it. He the reason he had it there was to take it away from uh, the home. But I think it's just it's bad judgment, bad judgment and uh, being very immature. 5. Dennis Against the Media We have already talked about Dennis the Menace in other videos thanks to his participation in films and advertisements. Rodman always made a name for himself. He could have done it even without dyeing his hair. 
In his favor, we must say that the camera loves him, so we do not understand why he decided to kick one of his operators. On January 15, 1997, Rodman kicked cameraman Eugene Amos in his testicles after tripping over him during an NBA game against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Several days later, he was fined $25,000 and suspended for 11 games. It could have been the fastest pass from basketball to football by a professional without ever leaving the court. Wait a minute, you got here and haven't subscribed to the channel yet? I think it's time you did. It's the best way to get our news to you. Yes, I know we said it before, but if we don't repeat it, you'll forget it, and YouTube will choose for you. Isn't it better that you do it yourself? Go ahead, click on the subscribe button right now. Angle of that Rodman incident with the photographer. Did you see that? Well, you know, first of all, it was a you know one of those situations where guys are tumbling into the press, and you know Dennis has had that confrontation before in the playoffs last year where there was an incident where he broke a camera by you know hitting it with a ball. And I don't know what happened there, but it looked like he kicked the guy. It looked like he kicked the guy in the knee, and the guy suddenly got uh, you know falsetto. And I don't know how it happened, and it was down at his knee, and it ended up in falsetto. But uh, Dennis come back and they said, Dennis, did you do that on purpose? And he said, you know, he, he tripped me up on the thing. He said I kicked him, I kicked him right above the knee, and I said, well, that's what I said. But I mean, uh, the referee said he was in a lot of pain, and uh, he looked like he was in a lot of pain. Four, push the tempo. The behavioral problems of NBA players seem to have no limits when it comes to venting some pent-up anger. They beat up their teammates, their coaches, and even the cameramen, so why wouldn't they do it with the refs? Nicky Maxwell Van Exel played 13 seasons in the NBA in the point guard position. On April 10, 1996, Van Exel pushed referee Ron Garretson to the scoring table after Garretson expelled him for complaining about one of his decisions during an NBA game against the Denver Nuggets. The next day, he was fined $25,000 and suspended for seven games. It just sends a bad message. You know, it's bad. But he isn't alone. On January 15, 2003, Wallace confronted and threatened former referee Tim Donaghy in the parking lot outside the Rose Garden after an NBA game against the Memphis Grizzlies. Several days later, he was suspended for seven games. Currently, Van Exel is the assistant coach of the Memphis Grizzlies of the NBA. Hopefully, he will induce his players to respect the referees, or they'll be stuck with him. 3. Fastest behind the wheel and without a ball There are NBA players who own the fastest sports cars in their class. That doesn't mean they put them on top speed all the time. Well, at least not the ones called Earl Joseph Smith III, known as J.R. Smith, player and brother of another basketball player, Chris Smith. On August 28, 2009, Smith was suspended for seven games after pleading guilty to a reckless driving charge in a 2007 car accident that resulted in the death of a passenger. He had already been suspended for two games just after the accident. While his misdemeanor was not on the court, it cost a life. To the victim's family, this short suspension probably has been seemed unfair. It, it just tears me up that it has to, I mean, it went down like that. It's, it, it's, it is, I take full responsibility for everything that happened. Two, hit me and call me a fan. If you thought the only Mad Max was the one Mel Gibson plays in the movies, then you don't know Vernon Maxwell, NBA player from 1988 to 2001, with his biggest period at the Houston Rockets. In addition to his achievements in basketball, he was famous for his erratic behavior in public and his confrontations with the law, being arrested eight times in 10 years. In fact, he was no longer called Mad Max, but simply Maxwell, because of his good performance in the three-ball line, which reached its great success in the decisive 1994 NBA Finals game between Houston and New York. Maxwell is one of the few players who have managed to score 30 points in a single quarter, and in that game, he also scored 51 points in total on January 26, 1991 against Cleveland. What could have gone wrong? All that energy turned against himself when on February 6, 1995, Maxwell walked into the stands and beat a fan during an NBA game against the Portland Trailblazers. Three days later, he was fined $20,000 and suspended for 10 games. Sometimes fans don't get as much love back as they expect. 1. Stoned and unwilling to rehabilitate In 1991, Richard Dumas of the Phoenix Suns was briefly suspended for violating the NBA's substance abuse policy. In 1993, he was suspended indefinitely after testing positive for a prohibited substance and not participating in the drug rehabilitation program. After two years, he was reinstated and subsequently excluded for violating a clause in his contract prohibiting alcohol use. Richard was not lucky enough to have someone trade the bar in his house for a library and just get drunk by reading books. Then I'm a good person, I made a mistake, but I'm not gonna let that keep me down. But it wasn't just Dumas who was banned or suspended for illegal substance use. There is a long list of stars, including Chris Anderson of the New Orleans Hornets, Stanley Roberts of the Philadelphia 76ers, 
Mitchell Wiggins, and his partner Lewis Lloyd by cocaine use, and many others. Even recently, the NBA has suspended power forward John Collins, Atlanta Hawks, for 25 games for the use of prohibited substances. Those who say that success is a very powerful drug know that it has a lot of competition. So how was the video? Was it to your liking? If so, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe down below. We post Monday to Friday, so make sure to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post our videos. See you next time!